will come again. And up till now, we have uh, completed the carbohydrate metabolism for the glycolysis process. We have talked about that. Uh, now, today, we will be starting with the Krebs cycle. As I told you earlier, that this Krebs cycle that is happening into the mitochondrial uh, region, that is also called as the citric acid uh, cycle, and uh, that uh, the matrix of the mitochondria actually where this uh, pathway that is uh, going on that contains series of redox enzyme oxidation reduction type of the enzyme and uh, what is the summary of that uh, that is uh, releasing the two molecule of the carbon dioxide as a result of the decarboxylation uh, for one glucose molecule uh, the reduced coenzymes, just like NADH and FADH2, these are most important outcome as a source of the energy. And one molecule of ATP generated by substrate level phosphorylation as well, in addition to this NADH and FADH. So this is the summary for the Krebs cycle uh, as uh, we have already uh, discussed about the we have discussed about the glycolysis process this one we talked about the formation of the acetyl coa now we will be talking about this this part for the carbohydrate metabolism this is the cap side so look at this one on this side. This is the bigger picture of that. So pyruvic acid that is converted into the acetyl CoA that is uh, the reaction in happening into the mitochondria as a result of that NADH2 that is produced. This acetyl CoA along with the oxaloacetate that is the initiating point for the Krebs cycle. So acetyl CoA plus oxaloacetate that result in the formation of the citric acid and you can see there are series of steps these are the eight steps actually these are the eight steps and uh, you can see uh, that as a result of these eight steps three molecules of NADH2 this one this one and this one Three molecules of NADH2 is produced along with the one molecule of the FADH2 and one ATP with the release of two carbon dioxide. So this is the summary of the energetics. Three molecules of NADH2, one FADH2, one ATP and the release of the two molecules of carbon dioxide so, <coughs> so all of these NADH2 this NADH2 this NADH2 and this FADH2 that will go into the electron transport chain for further energy release so there are the eight reactions of the Krebs cycle look at this one these are the reactions first of all uh, there is the, as I told you earlier, that uh, pyruvic acid is converted into the acetyl CoA and NADH2 is produced. This acetyl CoA that reacts with the oxaloacetate. And you have to remember the chemical formula for this one acetyl CoA, uh, CoA, C double bond O, CH3. And uh, oxaloacetate, it's a four carbon compound. One, two, three, four. You can see if it's a dicarboxylic four carbon compound. Dicarboxylic means the carboxylic acid at the first end and at the terminal last end, C double H. In between that, C double bond O and CH2. Right? So this oxaloacetate reacts with the acetyl CoA, forming the citric acid. That was a dicarboxylic acid oxaloacetate. Citric acid is a tricarboxylic tri acid. C W H C W H C W H. So citric acid is a tricarboxylic acid. Along with that, 
CH2, COH, CH2. Right. So this is the citric acid. <coughs> Uh, acetyl CoA and oxaloacetate that is forming the citric acid uh, that is converting into the isocitric acid just a release of the oxygen from that right so this oxygen basically it is coming at that point isocitric acid then the next step is the release of the carbon dioxide from that from the isocitric acid carbon dioxide is released thus forming alpha keto glutarate alpha keto glutarate that is a, again a dicarboxylic acid just like the oxaloacetate that was the dicarboxylic acid this is also the dicarboxylic acid uh, containing two carboxylic acid molecule in this one so the first one c basically it's a four carbon compound just like that oxaloacetate was the four compound carbon compound this is also the fourth carbon first carbon second carbon third carbon, fourth carbon. so cwh ch2 ch2 c double bond o cwh and at that step nad is produced uh, converted into nadh2 alpha ketoglutrate that is converted into succinyl coa with the release of war, uh, carbon dioxide molecule so succinyl COA, COA, CH2, CH2, C double bond SCO. This succinyl COA that is releasing, that is converting into succinic acid. It's again a dicarboxylic acid, C double OH, CH2, CH2, C double OH. It's a dicarboxylic acid, and as a result of that, the COA that is released forming. Uh, the GTP that is converted into GTP and later on this GTP produce the ATPs. <clears throat> this succinic acid to the isomerase enzyme converted into the fumaric acid. <coughs> Again, it's a dicarboxylic acid. You can see here, you can see here, releasing a hydrogen from this. One hydrogen is released from this point, one hydrogen is released from this point, so there will be a double bond here, CHCH double bond. So it's a, again a dicarboxylic acid, so succinic acid is converted into the fumaric acid, and at this step, FAD is reduced in the form of the FADH2, and this FADH2 will go into the electron transport chain. And finally, this fumaric acid that is converted into the malic acid again this is a dicarboxylic acid so you, you can see most of the compound in this Krebs cycle that is the dicarboxylic acid except this one citric acid and citric acid that is a tricarboxylic acid so fumaric acid is converted into the malic acid by the addition of water molecule and where this water HOH is introducing H is introducing at that point and OH is introducing at that point. So this is the malic acid. It's a dicarboxyl. First in the terminal is the carboxylic acid. Uh, second carbon HCOH. Third carbon CH2. And this malic acid is turned into oxaloacetate. So look at this one. This malic acid is converting into oxaloacetate this is an initiating point for the Krebs cycle and at that step again NADH2 is produced so NADH2 is produced at three places this one this one and this one and FADH2 produce at one step and GTP or ATP is produced at one step So uh, after the Krebs cycle, all of this NADH2 and FADH2 that will go to the electron transport chain for oxidative phosphorylation process. Uh, what is the characteristics of this electron transport chain? That consists of series of electron carriers in the inner mitochondrial membrane that are reduced and the oxidized. As the electron passes through the chain, exogenic reaction releases energy. 
used to form ATP that is uh, pro the process that is called as gaming osmosis and final electron acceptor is oxygen to form the water molecule in this electron transport chain <coughs> so we will be looking at the chemical osmosis process uh, that uh, uh, okay, there is uh, the carriers that act as proton pump to expel the hydrogen from the mitochondrial matrix i will show some of the uh, uh, pictorial form as well as the animation uh, in the next lecture for this chemical osmosis here we will be discussing on the some introducing point for the chemical osmosis process uh, detail we will uh, be looking in the next lecture uh, that creates high proton electrochemical gradients uh, and that gradient has the potential on energy to move the protons as proton flow back into the matrix through membrane generate atp using the atp synthesis so th that is a summary of all the chemical osmosis process we will further explain this with the help of the animation so this is the picture of uh, describing uh, the whole process of the electron transport chain look at uh, this one these are the hydrogen channel that is creating a gradient these are the hydrogen channel that it is cre creating the uh, gradient the, this is the upper membrane of the mitochondria this is the lower membrane of the mitochondria and this is the inter space membrane space between these two layers so basically this portion of the mitochondria that has been shown this is the upper layer this is the inner layer this is the interspace so all of that is uh, happening in this region so higher proton concentration between the inner and outer mitochondrial membrane inner and outer mitochondrial membrane so this is the inner mitochondrial membrane this this is the inner this is the outer so electron transport chain includes the proton pumps proton pump here the low proton concentration in the matrix of the mitochondria this is the matrix portion this is the matrix portion so there is lower concentration of the proton into this region right and outside there is the higher concentration of the proton so that creates a gradient that creates the gradient and this gradient is the driving force for movement of the proton and that movement of proton that moves the atp synthetase this is atp synthetase so atp synthetase what is the function of this atp synthetase that is producing the atps from nadh fadh2 this will be the producing the ATPs. And what is the driving force for this one? How that moves? How that moves in a circular motion? They are protons gradient. The proton gradient. As we know that the matrix have the low protons, low H plus. And the outer side that is the higher. So there is a gradient. So this gradient that derives this. ATP synthetase and as it moves there will be production of the ATPs from NADH2 from FADH2 so look at this one <coughs> how, how this protons that is turning it around this ATP synthetase that is turning it around this ATP synthetase we will see, also see this in the animation as well. So look at this one. This this is the channel. This is the channel. This is the channel. This is the channel that is moving it around. So the, as it moves around, there is the production of ATPs. So it's not a simple uh, 
process that is a complex process so one of the things we have already discussed here that is the movement of the protons that is the driving force for the atp synthetase here so look at this one there are certain carriers as we talked about in the here we talked about that there are certain carriers right so look at this one these are the carriers 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 and this is the atp synthetase this is the hydrogen or proton channel these are the hydrogen or the proton channel so space between outer and inner mitochondrial membranes that is very important and these carriers they transfer high energy electrons from one to another carrier one to another carrier this will transfer to quinones and quinones that will be uh, shuttle it to another cytochrome right and this will transfer to oxidase this is the right and what is the driving force you can see here this is the matrix part this is the matrix part the proton that is actually moving from this region to the this region so moving to that part and then in the proton channel that will move this ATP synthesis right that that's the whole process of working so look at this one high energy electron that is shifted to that one then this is shifting to that one so this is basically the NADH dehydrogenase enzyme NADH dehydrogenase enzyme as you know the dehydrogenase is performing the function of oxidation and the reduction right so that is taking the high energy electrons from that transferring it to the quinones so cytochrome there are several cytochrome cytochrome b cytochrome c1 cytochrome c right so look at this one after that transfer the electrons that is transferred to cytochrome c and this cytochrome c that will be transferring into the cytochrome oxidase and so you can see a lot more carriers are involved in that process and this oxidase that is turning it into the water molecule <coughs> and the protons and see here the protons that is driving this ATP synthetase, driving this ATP synthetase in the, in the circular motion always. And when that drives, there is the production of ATPs. So this is the summary of uh, all the cellular respiration process. Uh, <clears throat> so glycolysis we have discussed how much is the atps that are generated what is happening while the acetyl coa step and what is happening into the electron transport chain and how much is the atps are dwelt in this stage so uh, one thing I want to more share here. Just go to on my website. To have the animation of all that process. So this is the, my website. Ask Ahmed one.
asafemadwan.wixsite.com slash students. So go on to that. Spring 2020 courses. So look at this one ATP synthesis. Two videos. One is the electron transport chain. First of all, look at this one. The electron transport chain is a series of protein complexes embedded in the mitochondrial membrane. Electrons captured from donor molecules are transferred through these complexes. Coupled with this transfer is the pumping of hydrogen ions. This pumping generated in the mitochondrial membrane. Electrons captured from donor molecules. Series of protein complexes embedded in the mitochondrial membrane. Electron captured from the donor molecules. Donor molecules are transferred these complexes are transferred through these complexes <laughs> coupled with this transfer is the pumping of hydrogen ions this pumping generates the coupled with this transfer is the pumping of the hydrogen ions that i have told you earlier in the picture and this pumping generates the gradient that is used by the atp synthase complex to gradient used by the atp synthase complex to synthesize atp the following complexes are found in so the electron this transport. One. This is the NADH dehydrogenase. Chain. NADH dehydrogenase. Cytochrome BC1. Cytochrome oxidase. And the complex that makes ATP. ATP synthase. In addition to these so complexes, two mobile carriers are also involved. And this ubiquinone, is the ubiquinone and cytochrome C. And cytochrome C. Other key components in this process so this are NADH, the NADH and the electrons it. from it, the electrons. hydrogen ions, hydrogen ion in the form of this molecular oxygen, molecular oxygen, water. In the water molecule is produced as a result. And ADP and PI. This is the ADP. Which combine to form ATP. That is used to make the joint to make the ATP. At the start of the electron so transport this chain. How this process happens. First of all, the NADAT hydrogenase that will take the high energy electrons. Two electrons are passed from NADH into the NADH. You can see. This is your NADH coming from the Krebs cycle, coming from the glycolysis that consists of high energy electrons. Dehydrogenase so complex. The electrons are Coupled with this transfer process. is the pumping of one hydrogen. And there is the release of the protons. Right? Ion for each electron. So now this, these high energy electrons that are shifted towards the transporters. You can see here. Next, the two electrons. These are transporting. You can see these are, trans are transferred to ubiquinone. Ubiquinone transporters. Ubiquinone. So these are transporting it. Known is called a mobile transfer molecule These because it moves the electrons to the cytochrome BC1 complex. Each electron is then passed from the cytochrome BC1 complex to cytochrome C. Cytochrome C accepts each electron one at a time. One hydrogen ion is pumped through the complex as each electron is transferred. 
The next major step occurs in the cytochrome oxidase complex. This step and there is a release of the protons as well from the inner matrix towards the outer membrane. <coughs> so high energy electrons are transported. Requires four so electrons. Transporting These four electrons. Cytochrome oxidase. Cytochrome oxidase. You can see this will be transporting to the cytochrome oxidase. Electrons interact with a molecular oxygen molecule and eight hydrogen ions. At the four electrons you can see at every step there is the transfer of the protons to the outer membrane. So this this is a driving force. Electrons, four of the hydrogen ions and the molecular oxygen are used to form two water molecules. The other four hydrogen ions are pumped across the membrane. This series of hydrogen pumping steps so creates here, a gradient. A lot more protons are there. Here, the comparatively lower amount of the protons is here. Here, the lot more protons are there. So this is the, the these protons that will be moving into the ATP synthase that will turn it around. That will turn it around. So at every turn, there will be the formation of the ATP. Gradient. The potential energy okay, in this gradient no, is used protons. by... These are the protons you can see here. That is charging it. That is charging it at every step. This is the proton channel that is attaching it, these protons. So look at it uh, carefully. By ATP synthase to make so ATP, ATP from ADP and inorganic phosphate. And you can see this is the channel for the protons. This is moving around. All the time. Sweet. So look at this one. The ATP synthesis steps you see here are discussed in so greater detail moves, in the ATP at synthase step, gradients animation. It, it, it moves around. At every step, there is the formation of the ATP. This is the ADP that attached with it. This and animation illustrates two full ATP cycles ATP. of electron donation. The ATP molecule. In biological systems, however, Many electron transport cycles occur simultaneously, so this is the whole helping to ensure that, that the proton gradient the is always maintained. Transport chain, taking the NADH2 and the FADH2. So, uh, we will be finishing closing our lecture here and we will meet in some other lectures we will meet again thank you take care of yourself and your family